Okay, welcome to the first video on this YouTube channel, and it's actually going to be a series of videos on the topic that we have in front of us, building a portable development environment. This is sort of an interesting topic to me, uh, something that I've been thinking about a lot as I work on two separate machines. I have a, a work laptop, which is a MacBook, and then I have my own PC, which is running Windows Subsystem for Linux. Up until this point, both computers are using separate configurations, separate development environments. And as I get into uh, different tools and experimenting, I'd like to have them run in parallel. So the goal of the, the series of videos is to set up a development environment that I can manage via GitHub and that I can use on both machines. I have a Notion document up here to kind of lay out what we're trying to accomplish uh, with this project. So the main goals here are to set up a development environment that can be reproduced on other machines, make it cross-platform, Mac OS and Linux, and write an install script that can boot up the entire environment. And then finally, uh, once we have all this stuff set up, we can uh, push it all to GitHub and store it in a single repository and uh, you know maintain it over time. The tools that we're gonna be using to make this all happen is Nix, which is a, uh, a lot of things actually, but we're gonna use it as a replacement for Homebrew if you're a Mac OS user. Uh, essentially, we can use it as a cross-platform package manager, which is like the bread and butter of this setup. For my shell, I use ZSH. For text editing, I'm gonna use NeoVim, and then Sto, which is a, a command line tool to kind of do some cool f uh, sim linking and, and file structure wizardry. And we're going to use that to manage our DAW files. Now, I wrote a few articles on NeoVim and managing your DAW files with Sto. So if you're interested in how we're going to use these tools to set this all up, feel free to check these out. I'm going to link, not only will I link these two articles in the description, but I'm definitely going to link this uh, Notion document in the description as well so you can use it for reference. And then after those main tools, we have a few other packages that I use you know, on a semi-daily basis. We have, of course, Git, NVM for managing node versions. Antibody is a plugin manager for ZSH, uh, similar to oh My ZSH if, you're, if you've used that before. Tmux, which is a window multiplexer inside your terminal. Yarn for package management in, in uh, JavaScript world. Uh, FCF, which is like a fuzzy finder, command line fuzzy finder tool. Rip grep, which is really good searching in the command line. And then bat, which is, you know, a lot of these plugins are, are unique to me. It's not something I am forcing on anyone, but that's the, the packages that we'll be installing. And the goal is to, to make this a four part series. So this video, after we get through the introduction, uh, we'll get started installing Nix, and then we will set up ZSH and NeoVim, and then the last video will set up our DAW files. Now, depending on when you watch this, these videos will probably all be published, and I'll have links to all of them below, so you can just jump around to whatever suits your fancy. To get started, I have a Windows terminal here. Remember, this is a, a PC. I am running Windows 11, and... On top of Windows 11, I'm using Linux with Windows Subsystem for Linux. In front of us, we have a command prompt that is uh, running Ubuntu, and it's a fresh installation of Ubuntu. If I ls my home directory, uh, there are a number of dot files in here, none of which I've created. They kind of come standard. If I echo my shell, I'm running bash, and if I echo my user, it is me, it me, and then if I echo my present working directory, my present working directory is home Jake. So this is uh, untouched by me, but we are gonna use this as a jumping off point. So the first thing that we wanna do uh, is get our package manager installed. And we're gonna do this with the Nix package manager. So if I click this link here and I go to Nix OS, like I said earlier, Nix is, a lot of things, including it can be an operating system, but what we want to use is a uh, package manager. If you go to this GitHub link here, which I'll also have in the description, this is actually a GitHub repository full of packages that 
you can install you know with app get or with homebrew uh, and nix is just another alternative we need to get it installed on our machine so i'm going to install nix and on the download page here there is a curl command that is running this uh this nix install script so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to go back to my terminal and i'm going to go ahead and paste it and ask me for my password and we're finished installation finished to ensure that the necessary environment variables are set either log in again or type dot and then this path to the nix.sh file so i'm just going to copy that and i'm going to source it and after we do we should have a few new files in our home directory so we have a sim link a nix profile sim link and a couple other nix files and if I type in nix env, error, no operation specified, but that's fine because now we have access to this nix env command. And we're gonna use this nix env command to install a bunch of packages. When we sourced that, when we ran that last command here, what nix ended up doing was dumping a one liner into this dot profile here i guess that is the default i haven't read up on why that is but at the bottom of our terminal you can see this if statement and it says if this directory or this file exists then it's going to source it uh, and this will run every time your terminal starts in the future since we don't use bash we're going to want to put this in our zshrc file but for now we're just going to leave it here uh, and the reason we need this is that every time you start a new terminal session, the nix.sh file will execute and give you access to a number of different tools, including nix.env. Um, but if we go back to our Notion template, one of the goals is to write an install script that we can use to boot up the environment in the future. So I'm gonna go ahead and in, the, in my home directory, I'm gonna create this install.sh file, and I'm gonna add in this file a sequence of steps that I want to execute the next time I set up a development environment. So instead of executing these steps individually I, and manually, I wanna do it in an automated fashion. So if you think about what we just did, we first installed Nix, and then we source Nix. And so if I go back and I grab these commands, so this will be the command for installing. Oop, I'm in command mode. So this will be the command for installing. And then the command for sourcing was a dot followed by the home directory Nix profile, etc, profile.d, nix.sh. What we're doing now is we're basically telling this install.sh file that when it runs, the first thing we want to do is install Nix package manager with this line, and then we want to source it, right? So we're kind of, we're building our, our local development environment in Ubuntu, and in tandem, we're kind of writing out all the steps we've taken in this install.sh file. So now that we have Nix installed, and we are sourcing Nix in our home directory here, we have access to this nixenv command. And what nixenv allows us to do is install packages. You can open a new tab, go to this nix os search packages. Conveniently, I'm already searching for zsh here. Uh, but if, you know, let's just say you wanted to install git, you can search for git, and right here there's this link to git, and it'll show you based on whether or not you're inside of nix operating system or not what command you would run. Since we're not inside NixOS, uh, for this example, we're in Linux, we wanna choose the on non NixOS tab, and it provides this uh, convenient little script here. So we want ZSH, let's start with ZSH first, and we are not on NixOS, so we're gonna copy this command, and we're gonna come back here to our terminal, and we're gonna paste it, and you can see that now we're installing uh, ZSH with Nix. If I type in which ZSH, you can see the path to that executable is in my home directory slash Nix profile slash bin ZH. If I say uh, which bash, and you have user bin bash, right? So um, 
it kind of is it's a neat little feature of Nix that it's storing all of the packages that you're installing into a very deterministic uh, a very convenient location you know if I wanted to do the same command but instead I'm going to install git so now I have which zsh and I have which git and they're relatively you know their executables are stored in the same area which is really neat now if we go back to notion we have git installed we have zsh we still have a number of other uh, packages to install now i could sit here and i could write you know nix env dash i dash a for all of these but that's a little inefficient so i'm going to create a new uh, ephemeral uh, sh file called plugins.sh and i'm going to write all the plugins I want to install here, but we've already installed ZSH and we've installed Git, so we can delete those. If I save this file, what is, what's essentially going on here is we're running this install command over a number of packages. So instead of individually writing them out one by one, I can just dump everything I want in here and install it in one command. So I'll save this file. And all I have to do is run this like you would with an sh file. And I'll go and install all these packages at once. But if I do this, I'm going to get permission denied, right? Because I don't have permissions to run this file. So what we can do is uh, assign permissions for this user by using chmod plus x um, plugins.sh. And then if I run plugins.sh again, I'll just be installing everything because now I have permissions. Cool. So now I have this plugins.sh file. We can delete it. We don't need it anymore. But I just want to show you guys that uh, we did indeed install all of these packages. So for instance, bat is sort of a replacement for cat. So I can write uh, bat plugins.sh. And, you know, it's a little it's a little syntactic sugar. It's a little visual sugar over the typical cat sh. Um, but I do have access to it, right? If I type in which bat, you can see that it's stored in the same location as git, as zsh, etc. And it did that for all of these, which is great. So again, Nix is sort of the bread and butter of this portable development environment setup. It works on Mac OS. It works on Linux and you can carry and take all of your packages, whatever packages you use that Nix supports and, and they do support a lot of them and you can take it with you. And the next thing we wanna do is, first we can remove this uh, plugins.sh, we don't need it anymore. And we can go into our install.sh and we can add a new entry, say install packages. And we can just kind of take all of the packages we want and drop them in here. So we have ZSH, we have antibody, we have git, etc, etc, etc. So now in our install.sh file, we have three things happening, right? We are installing our package manager of choice, we're sourcing it, and then we're immediately installing all the packages we want, which is perfect. Now you can imagine in the future, uh, you buy a new laptop or you, you get a PC and you, you run Windows subsystem for Linux and you have your development environment already stored in GitHub. All you need to do is, is clone it, run your install.sh file, and you will be uh, set up with a pretty nice development environment. In the next video, we're going to go through setting up ZSH. And then in, in the video following that, we're going to set up NeoVim. So this is just setting up Nix and kind of laying the, the groundwork for the real nit nitty gritty stuff, which will come in the next video. So I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you are looking to set up ZSH or NeoVim, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to publish those real soon.